Joining us now, former Detroit Police Chief Ralph Godby. Good to see you. I, I get that there's a debate to have about guns and everything else. Maybe we wait until after the funerals or at least halfway through the show before we have it. But I, I wanted to just play the soundbite of the police chief um, where he talked about how he was almost moved to tears. Take a listen. I was literally moved to tears to see this and the kids as they were being ushered out of the building. I hope that we would never have this situation. That if we ever did, we would not wait. We would immediately go in and we would immediately engage the person perpetrating this horrible crime. What's he going through right now? Leland, uh, first uh, thoughts and prayers to yeah. the city of Nashville and those that are involved. Uh, as a chief, it's, it's heart wrenching. Uh, some things you can reconcile in your mind when bad things happen, when uh, people are engaged in crime, gang activity. But when you have children in a safe space, uh, it's unfathomable to a parent that you would send your kid to school and they don't come home. And to be a chief in a major city, uh, to oversee that, uh, to see the scene where it took place, uh, to see the sheer terror that takes place in a situation like that, uh, it's one of those things that keep you up at night. Uh, I, unfortunately, uh, after 25 years with Detroit Police Department, a number of years as an executive and two years as chief, uh, those images you just don't get out of your head uh, when it's young people that uh, senselessly are murdered. And this appears to be another one of those situations. I, I think about in times like that, when I've interviewed the families and been with the families who've lost children, and then the, the flip side of that, being in war and seeing seeing it up close and personally, uh, never seen seen it in the United States, but it, it 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 does stay with you in a way that you can't you can never forget. It just is too no. searing uh, if you have a heart that it, 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 it brands your heart in a way with this emotion. But you you talked about that it's senseless in a way, and and it is. It appears as though this person was both methodical and motivated by a certain uh, feeling. Uh, they were. They were at this school probably close to 20 years ago, if you just do the math of you end at sixth grade, which you're 12, 13 years old. And this person, uh, the shooter is now 28 years old. So it's 15 years uh, at least. Um, very unusual to have a school shooting at an elementary school by an ex-student and especially at a small Christian school. Yes. It's, uh, you know, it. As you look at it, Leland, just from a sheer criminology standpoint, uh, many people may think, well, the shooter is dead. Where do we go from here? But there are so many lessons to learn. I'm sure the FBI, uh, the Nashville PD, they're going to be looking at social media, uh, any manifestos that may have been written, uh, any triggers or warning signs, how the weapons were attained. Uh, it's just so much left to find out. Uh, number one, from a lessons learned standpoint, uh, we have to debrief these things to do as as best we can uh, to prevent or avert the next tragedy from happening. Uh, for as many tragedies as we see of mass shootings, uh, you have to credit the people of law enforcement and uh, great intelligence at times for the number of times that these situations are averted. Yeah, but yeah, the thing we, about we don't know is, about the successes. It's it's a great point. Yeah. And look. You, in a way, it seemed as though this school was doing a lot of things right. The fact that they had to shoot through a door to gain yes. entry tells you that all the doors were locked. There's a few different yes. angles to this. Um, you and I didn't talk during Uvalde. I was down there. Um, and I, I remember hearing the parents and, and watching the videos of their screams for those 70 minutes when they knew their children were being shot and the police were doing nothing. Yes. Based on what you've heard of a timeline, a 911 call and 14 minutes later, a uh, shooter's down. Can it get any faster than that? Not much. Uh, this is what we train for. This, uh, this definitely was not a Uvalde situation. Uh, you're trained in an active shooter, and Columbine is the seminal event that changed law enforcement's stance. And these officers, uh, and, and uh, let me uh, give a shout out to the EMT workers as well. They were very well coordinated. They went in, they neutralized the target. Uh, and then they rendered aid to those. Uh, arguably, and there's no silver lining to six people dead, three children, but it could have been much worse. 
uh, if they had not have responded in kind and took the appropriate active shooter uh, protocols and neutralized the shooter. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.